Hi. Peace be with you. My name is Rodolfo Martin Vitancol, a Gemini. In this video, I will present to you Will the second coming of Christ really happen? Seven questions about the second coming of Christ. Question number one. Will Jesus come again? Yes. Because he said so. Matthew 16, 27 to 28. Jesus said, For the Son of Man will come with his angels in the glory of his Father. Question number two. How will Jesus come again? Matthew 24, 30 to 31. Jesus said, They will see the Son of Man coming on clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send forth his angels with a trumpet blast, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of the heavens to the other. Jesus' coming is very visible that the whole world will not fail to see it. 24, Matthew 24, 27 Jesus said, For just as lightning comes from the east and is visible even in the west, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. Question number three. Why will Jesus come again? Two differing accounts in the gospel why Jesus will come again. First account. In the gospel of John, Jesus will come back to take his disciples with him to his father's kingdom where rooms have been prepared for them. John 14, 2-3 Jesus said, My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. Second account. In the synoptic gospels of Matthew, Mark and Luke, Jesus will come again at the end of the age to judge the living and the dead. Matthew 16, 27 to 28. For the Son of Man will come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone according to what has been done. In the Gospel of John, it can also be assumed 
that Jesus will come again on Judgment Day to judge the living and the dead. John 5, 28 to 29, Jesus said, Do not be astonished at this, for the hour is coming when all those who are in their graves will hear his voice and will come forth from their graves. Those who have done good deeds will rise to life, while those who have done evil will rise to judgment. Question number four. When will Jesus come again? Jesus will come again at the end of the age. Matthew 24, 29 to 30. Jesus said, Immediately after the distress of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give forth its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. Question number five. When will the end of the age be? Jesus gave a very clear answer to this. Matthew 24, 36. Jesus said, As for the exact day and hour, no one knows. Neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Jesus tells us to be always vigilant. Matthew 24, 44. Jesus said, Keep watch, for you do not know the day when your Lord is coming. And so, from where did the Christians get the idea that Jesus' second coming is imminent? From the book of Revelation, Revelation 22, 20, he who testifies to these things says, Yes, I am coming soon. Two thousand years have already passed since Revelation prophesied that Jesus is coming soon. Even as billions of Christians have already died waiting for Jesus' second coming, but no Jesus, not even a shadow, has ever appeared. Yes. And the funniest thing here is, 2,000 years have already passed and they are still saying that Jesus is coming back soon. You know why Revelation's prophecy did not come true? Because the book of Revelation is a hoax. 
Revelation is totally a plagiarized work. Most, if not all, of Revelation's prophecies are copied from the visions of some of the Old Testament prophets such as Isaiah, Daniel, Ezekiel, and Zechariah, as well as in the book of Psalms. For a complete detail about this, view my post with the title of The Book of Revelation is a Hoax. Question number six. Will God really destroy the world to mark the end of the age and pave the way for the creation of a new heaven and a new earth? The answer is no, never. Luke 9, 51 to 56. As the time drew near for him to be taken up, Jesus resolutely set his sights on Jerusalem and he sent messengers ahead of him. They entered a Samaritan village to make arrangements for his arrival, but the people there would not receive him because his destination was Jerusalem. When his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them even as Elijah did? But he turned and rebuked them and said, You do not know what kind of spirit you are of. For the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. Can I repeat that? You do not know what kind of spirit you are of. For the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. It is not in the Spirit of God to destroy what He has created, but rather save it and protect it in order to eternalize it. In fact, the very main reason why he sent his only begotten son to the world is not to condemn it, but to bring it life, a life to the full. John 10, 10. Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. What is life to the full? It is a life that is both liberated in the body and saved in the soul. 
tell me if God were to destroy the world where is the logic now of Jesus asking us to follow him in his mission of life for the world when in the end his father will simply destroy the world isn't it that in the prayer he taught us part of the prayer says thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven it is the will of the father to bring his kingdom to earth not destroy the earth furthermore where is the logic of creating a world so perfectly designed only to be only to be destroyed again simply to pave the way for the creation of a new heaven and a new earth is life on earth like an entrance exam where there is a time limit that when the time limit comes everyone must pass their paper finished or unfinished that whoever passes the exam gets admitted whoever fails gets rejected God built into his design the law of nature that governs all life in the world and since God is life his law of nature is also life. The whole essence of the law of nature is promotion of life, never destruction. Listen to this. The world is God's greatest masterpiece. Ending it we be like seeing Leonardo da Vinci destroying his masterpiece Mona Lisa. For what reason? Because Mona Lisa's time on earth is up. It doesn't make any sense at all, right? This I will tell you. A perfect creation ought to last forever. Anyone who created something perfect, he would protect it with his body and soul. In short, there will be no another physical creation to pave the way for the creation of a new heaven and a new earth as prophesied in that fake book of Revelation. God is simply perfect at first touch. If there is anything to change in our world, it is we and our destructive attitudes and behavior in life. It is the changing of our attitudes and behavior in life that shall renew the world. And this is exactly what Jesus was all along proclaiming to the whole world when he came. Matthew 4 17 Jesus said change your ways the kingdom of heaven is near Jesus has been asking the people of the world to change their wrong ways of thinking their wrong ways of living 
the wrong ways of treating one another, the wrong ways of seeking happiness, the wrong ways of worshiping God, and other more wrong ways needed to bring the fullness of life to each and every child of God in the world. Truly, it is the changing of our ways where at the center of our lives must be God, not ourself, that shall pave the way for the creation of a new heaven and a new earth, not the destruction of our physical world that has been so perfectly designed by a perfect God. But you may argue in Luke 12, 49, Jesus said, I have come to bring fire down to the earth. I wish it were already started. I have a baptism to go through. How troubled I am until it is over. The fire there is a cleansing fire to purify us from our impurities as fire purifies gold from foreign matters, not a consuming fire to destroy the earth. Again, you may argue but in Matthew 24, 29, Jesus said, Immediately after the distress of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. If God really means to destroy the world, He can do it in one flick of a finger. Yes. Why still the need for darkening the sun and the moon and the falling of the stars? Jesus' statement there is a hyperbole that is not meant to be taken literally. Question number seven. Did Jesus fail when he told his disciples that some of them would not see death until they saw him coming in his kingdom? You will find the prediction of Jesus in Matthew 16, 28. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in His kingdom. Many believed Jesus miserably failed in this prediction of His since none of his disciples did really ever get to see him coming in his kingdom in their lifetimes. So, if Jesus failed, he is not really the Son of God that he claimed to be. Yes, 
He is very much like any human like us, liable to make mistakes. Those who defended Jesus used the transfiguration as the closest proof that of the apostles, specifically Peter, James, and John, did really see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The transfiguration refers to the event when Jesus took Peter, James, and John to the top of the mountain where Jesus met Moses and Elijah. In the transfiguration, the three apostles truly got a glimpse of Jesus in all his glory and regal splendor in his kingdom. The defenders of Jesus found this to be the most likely proof since in each of the synoptic gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the transfiguration immediately follows the prediction of Jesus which transpired only six days right after Jesus made his prediction. For me, this transfiguration proof is rubbish. Why? Firstly, was it only Peter, James, and John who were standing there when Jesus made his prediction? Or there were many other more? The likelihood is there were many other more. Yes? Secondly, what if I also say all of you who are viewing this video will not taste death before you see the next video I will post six days from now? 99.9% .9 I will be correct. Yes? The period between the prediction and the outcome is so near each other that anyone can make predictions with 100% accuracy. Yes? Here is my take on Jesus' prediction as really having been fulfilled by Jesus. But before I do that, let us first define what is a kingdom? A kingdom is a territory ruled by a king or queen. There are two kinds of kingdom. The kingdom of man and the kingdom of God. In the kingdom of man, if the ruler is good, the people are living well. If the ruler is bad, the people are living badly. That is not the case with the kingdom of God. In the kingdom of God, people are always living beautifully and happily. This is the kingdom that our Father in heaven wills for the world, for which he sent his only son, Jesus. It is a kingdom 
free from all kinds of evil and suffering. And so, when John the Baptist sent his men to ask Jesus if he's the Messiah, they are expecting this is the answer Jesus gave. Luke 7, 22. Go and report to John what you've seen and heard. The blind receive sight. The lame walk. The lepers are cleansed. The deaf hear. The dead are raised up. And the poor have the gospel preached to them. Jesus went about healing the sick, helping the poor, defending the oppressed, saving the lost, condemning all kinds of lies and hypocrisies, teaching to love even enemies, and even enhancing some of Yahweh's laws to make them conform to life, not destruction. Indeed, Jesus had successfully established the kingdom of God on earth, although not fully, before he left our world. There is no single goal that he was not able to accomplish before he expired on the cross. His kingdom grew so vigorously and so fast like mushrooms that his enemies did everything they could to stop it. And that is exactly what Jesus said in Matthew eleven twelve. From the time John the Baptist began preaching until now, the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing and violent people are attacking it. Can I repeat that? From the time John the Baptist began preaching until now, the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing and violent people are attacking it. And mark this, all the disciples saw this kingdom of Jesus in their lifetimes. Jesus fulfilled his promise. And in order for the kingdom to be fully established, Jesus gave his disciples the great commission what is this great commission? Matthew 28, 19 to 20. Jesus said, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. The truth is, the kingdom of God could have long been fully established by now, if not for one man. 
right after Jesus left, this one man came into the scene and destroyed all that Jesus and his disciples worked so hard for. What did this man do? He turned Jesus' kingdom into a church. Thus, instead of us seeing a fully established kingdom of God on earth, where all people would be seen living so beautifully and so happily like one brother and sister in God, free from all kinds of evil and suffering in the world, what we did get to see are churches scattered all over the world where people do come in to become members in order to be saved to the neglect of the sad condition the world is in. Everyone turns into self-seekers of salvation in Christ, no more doers in the mission of Christ. And so, Jesus' kingdom crumbled like a house of cards. The name of this man who destroyed Jesus, his mission, and his kingdom on earth is Paul. In conclusion, this is what I can say. The second coming of Jesus Christ will really happen, happening at the end of the age. And the end of the age will also surely come for truly in everything where there is a beginning there is an end however the end of the age will not be that soon as many false prophets have predicted it will be we can wait and wait for it but all of us are already dead and the end is still nowhere near to come. If forever has an end, the very end of forever is the time the end will come. Remember, that the world has already been in existence for millions and millions of years. So I expect the end to be coming anytime soon. Is it because the signs are already all there, such as the earthquakes? But how many thousands of earthquakes have already come and gone in the world. Is it the wars? But how many thousands of wars have already come and gone in the world? Is it the pandemic? But how many thousands of pandemics have already come and gone in the world? Waiting for the end of the world is like a man living in a tropical country waiting for snow. 
tropical countries don't have snow. The man is waiting for nothing. God is life, not destruction. If ever there is destruction and not life, it is we. It is we who are precipitating the end of the world by the way we treat one another in our world. Therefore, if you're looking for signs, don't look anywhere else. We are the signs. All said, drop all hopes of the second coming of Christ and instead put all our hopes on one day, seeing our world getting to be a much better place for everyone, where no one can be seen again, deprived of his human right to live with complete dignity as a child of God. I will tell you something. Haven't you wondered why God didn't reveal to us anything that is beyond the life here on earth? For instance, He did not tell us where were we before we came into this world. Neither where we will be after this life in the world. All we know is this life we have in the world. Did God purposely do it so that there is no other way but for us to direct our minds to that which is really important and that is none other than the life we have here on earth, the greatest gift that we have ever received from God. And that from the way we treat our lives here on earth, it is that will dictate if we are truly deserving of another life there in heaven above. All said, this is what I can say. If we are so eagerly awaiting the second coming of Christ, for we think we are already saved and ready to enjoy eternal life in heaven, Jesus is the same with us. He is also so eagerly awaiting our return to Him so that we may truly be saved in the eyes of God. And for us to truly be saved in the eyes of God, there is only one way. And that one way is to repent and follow Jesus in his mission of life for the world. Jesus is assuring all of us that his mission will really be good for our world, good for our lives, and good for our souls. Amen.
If you want to see a new light, a light you have never seen before, may I invite you to subscribe to this channel and walk with Jesus all the way to making his mission of life happen in our world. We owe it to our children and the children of our children for all generations to come. The making of our world a most beautiful and happy place for everyone, especially the poor and the oppressed among us, whom Jesus calls the least of his brothers and sisters. In the name of God, through his only son, Jesus, I wholeheartedly thank you for viewing this video presentation. May the Spirit of God be always with you that you may always be guided by the one and only truth who is our Father in heaven through his only Son, Jesus. Amen.